Hello everyone, this is Abi, aka Only Abi Doang, and today I'm going to be showing you 10 features in the Sims 4 Horse Friends expansion pack that you might not know, even though the pack has been out for almost 6 months now. Anyway, some of the footage I used here are taken from when I got the early access version of the pack back then, so my username will appear on the screen in some parts of the video. So without further ado, let's take a look at them. Once you've moved into Chestnut Ridge, the new world introduced in this pack, you may be welcome with a welcome wagon and one of your guests might be this sim called Roberto Prinkletop with Mysterious Rancher as their tech. To meet him regularly, he can be found in the new Appaloosa district around the town's general store on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You may also be notified if you're around the area. Anyway, when he's around, you'll be able to sell him bottle of nectars at a higher price. He'll then leave the area in the evening. You cannot even call him to visit since he's so mysterious. While talking to him, you might notice there's the option called Ask About Longevity, where he'll only tell you this instead. If you're good friends with him, the option will be renamed to Ask About Family Nectar Recipe. If you ask about it for the first time, he'll give you a bottle of Vitality Nectar. You can actually make one by using the Nectar Making Station, but you need to reach level 5 of the skill and have a Death Flower. After receiving a bottle of Nectar from him, if you try to ask him again later, he may either give you a Death Flower or a boring old spinach. Death flowers are pretty hard to obtain since you need to splice different types of plants to get one, so getting them this way can be pretty handy. Anyway, if a sim drinks the Vitality Nectar, each serving will reduce their age progression meter, which is around 1 day from unaged nectar, or 2 days from lightly, moderately, or finely aged nectar. Additionally, if a ghost drinks this nectar, it'll also resurrect them back to life. Still talking about the new world, if you go to the Galloping Gulch district and go near this broken bridge area, there's this horse tombstone placed right near the bridge and when you hover it, it says unknown horse. Anyway, that particular area will get a bit foggy at night and at random times, you may encounter an ominous ghastly horse sighting right on the other side of the broken bridge. It'll be there for a moment and then disappear. Unfortunately, it's just a visual effect and you can't interact with it. But, if you truly want a ghost horse you can play with, well, it's possible. If a horse die of old age, their ghost will appear from their tombstone at night and you can add them to your household once you are friends with them. They float, can pass through walls, and you can even ride them. They're so cool. There are two special treats that you can give to horses. First is the age up treat. This treat can be bought from the general store in the new Appaloosa district. If this treat is hand-fed to foals, they will age up to adult immediately. The same goes for adult horse, where they will age up into elder horse. No, you can't feed this to an elder horse, you monster. The second treat is called Horse Brosia. To create this, you need to make a plate of Ambrosia first, which is a ghost resurrecting food that can be made once you have level 10 in cooking and gourmet cooking skills. It requires an angelfish obtained from fishing, potion of youth from the reward store, and death flower obtained after splicing specific plants combinations. Once cooked, click on the plate of Ambrosia and choose Make into Horse Brosia Treat to convert the dish into the horse equivalent version of it. Once you have it in your inventory, feed it to your ghostly horse and it will resurrect them back to life. Aw oh man, no more floating ghost horse. Besides that, you can also obtain horse brogia rarely after exploring the Dread Horse Cavern or very rarely after harvesting prairie grass. Horses can breed in this game and in order for this to happen, first you need to have at least one stallion and one adult mare. Then, like cats and dogs, you can encourage one of the horses to breed with the other. Sometimes it might not work, so you need to wait for a bit before trying again. If it's successful, you'll get a notification about it. Horse pregnancy takes around 2-3 to three in game days. Foals that are born from breeding will always be born with one of these three unique traits, which are curious, playful, and hardy. These traits cannot be picked up from Creative Sim and won't take their trait slot, so it's like a bonus extra trait. Hardy horses can train for longer without getting fatigued, but their hunger need will decay faster. Curious horses are more curious about their surroundings, and perhaps a bit too curious sometimes. They were also more likely to try out the horse barrels and jumps on their own, and learn the agility and jumping skill much faster. Playful horses like to play with toys so much so that their fun need decays faster, but their social need increases faster. Additionally, if you have a horse that has beaten all the horse competition, including the Ultimate Horse Championship, the adult horse will get this reward trait called Champion Horse. If a horse with this trait breeds, the foal will have the chance to be born with the Championship Gene Bonus trait. Foals with this trait will gain skill faster and have much higher value if sold. Generally, foals cannot learn endurance, agility, and jumping skills, but they can start early and learn temperament skills. 
This skill is pretty crucial for Fool since it'll unlock several type of interactions that cannot be performed to them at first, such as rubbing their neck, hugging, hand feeding, and the ability to eat hay. This skill can be increased by socializing and interacting with the Fool frequently. Anyway, if they reach at least level 6 of the temperament skill before growing up into an adult horse, once they do grow up, the horse will gain this reward trait called Well-Mannered Foal. This trait will give permanent boosted gain to all the horse's skills, including temperament, endurance, agility, and jumping skills. There are a bunch of cross-pack features introduced in Horse Ranch. First are the new Occult Nectar recipes. These recipes can appear if your sim reaches level 4 of the Nectar Making skill as one of these three occults. For vampires, they can make a bottle of plasma nectar in which if drunk, will increase their thirst and vampire's energy need. It'll also give them a positive buff that's much stronger the longer it's aged. If a normal sim drinks this nectar, they'll get nauseous and throw up. For spellcasters, they can make a bottle of valeria nectar. Normal sims can drink this and they'll be happy like usual, but if a spellcaster drinks it, it'll also lower their spellcaster charge meter and have stronger effect the more the nectar ages. For werewolves, they can make a bottle of moon petal nectar. Like before, it can also be drunk by regular sims and make them happy, but if a werewolf drinks it, it'll lower their fury meter which calms them down a bit. Besides that, horses can also interact with other pets such as cats, dogs, and animals from Kajet Living Expansion Pack including cows, llamas, chickens, foxes, and rabbits. Cats and dogs can also interact with mini goats and sheep in a way. Additionally, if you hire a ranch hand, it'll also take care of the animals from Cottage Living as well. There are also some new milestones if you have Growing Together Expansion Pack. Oh, and you may think that if you have Seasons Expansion Pack, there wouldn't be any snow here in Chestnut Ridge. But turns out that it can actually snow in this world. Mini sheep and goats are the other new animals in this pack that can roam around, but unlike horses, they won't be added to your household. Think of them like the chickens and foxes in Cottage Living Expansion Pack. They can be bought from the general store, from the community board, through the phone, or by clicking on the feeder or horse bed. Then, they'll be put into your inventory and you need to get them out. You need to take care of their needs so they won't run away. Anyway, if you're at least friends with them, you can have them help with your gardening. Mini sheep can help by eating any weeds that appear on your plants, while mini goats can help by eating any bugs that appear. Besides that, they can also relieve your sim's negative emotions. Sims can hug mini sheep if they're feeling sad or scared to make the buff disappear faster. The same can be done with mini goats, but they can either relieve angry or tense buff. You can only share sheep and milk goats for simoleons, but if you also have the Cottage Living Expansion Pack, the option to share sheep for wool and milk goats to get a bottle of milk will appear. One more thing, mini goats and sheep can eat trash piles. So yeah, if you need a cute vacuum cleaner, there's that. In the Galloping Gulch district, you may find this cave called the Dread Horse Cavern, and you may think that entering it will be like any other rabbit hole caves where you have to read text and click on the option and a new text come up. I mean, it's still like that unfortunately, don't get me wrong, but this time it's done in a pretty unique way. Your sim will take part in a text adventure minigame with monsters and stuff, and your sim will even have their own HP you need to pay attention to. You'll get the option to attack, which can damage you or the enemy, or defend, which may heal you, make the monster go away, or kick you out of the cave. If you beat an enemy or make them run away, you'll get some progression points and you need 100 points in order to progress to the next level. Before progressing though, you may need to solve a riddle that requires you to bring a certain object. Like you need to bring a ship in your inventory to solve this riddle, have some prairie grass to pass this one, or even bring a glass of water to go pass through a fire. You can also find treasure chests that gives you various rewards or minerals that you can mine here. It can be a trap that kicks you out though, so be careful. As you enter higher levels, the enemies will become harder to beat and some may even require you to have certain types of items. Like you need to have a bunch of grape nectars to beat the flaming skeleton enemy or some red meat for this T-Rex enemy. If you get kicked out though, you'll get this dazed debuff and cannot go to the cave again until it disappears. I usually bring a sleeping bag which is included in this pack and take a nap using it so the dazed debuff expires faster. Keep in mind that the cave's level progression ties into each individual sim. Oh, and if you're wondering if there's a final level to this cave, don't even think about it, because according to the game files, the highest level for this cave is 1 billion. And yes, you heard that right, so it's practically endless. Even my sim gets kicked out of the cave a lot on level 9. Psst, and you can also activate the testing cheese on cheat, shift click on the cave, and obtain all the required items for all the puzzles and riddles. 
When exploring the new world, you may find this patch of wild grass that can be harvested if mature enough. You'll get prairie grass hay after harvesting it that can be fed to horse by hand or from the hay feeder, or you can also use it to make nectars. Horses, goats, and sheep can also graze on the wild grass patch directly. Once harvested, the patch of wild grass can't be harvested again and you need to wait for a while till it grows. If you want them to appear naturally in your home, you can equip the Wild Prairie Grass Lot Challenge if you want. Additionally, there is a chance that after harvesting from it, you'll get random valuable treasures and collectibles from it, especially if your sim has the rancher trait. And what's great is that you can also buy this patch of grass in buy mode for just 5 simoleons, which means that you can basically exploit this. Just buy a lot of patches of grass on your lot, have a sim with the rancher trait harvest all of them and after all is harvested, instead of waiting for it to grow again, sell the old patches and put a new one. Don't worry, you'll gain more cash from this alone. Now repeat this process a bunch of times and you'll get rich very fast. I did this for several times and this is my final haul. You can get the chance to get all kinds of nectars with various age level, including the vitality nectar which is very rare from grass. You can also get various qualities of horse manures for fertilizers, horse trees, collectibles such as plants, gems, metals, space rocks, frogs, and even my sims trophies. If a sim keeps getting negative reaction when interacting with horses, there's a chance they will develop a fear of horse. At first, you'll get this warning from the notification, but if you still keep failing, you'll get the actual fear. With this fear in effect, that sim will not be able to interact with a horse again unless they overcome it. They will also be scared when encountering one and will immediately run away from them. To overcome this fear, your sim needs to discuss about their fears first with other sims. Once done, the fear won't disappear right away, but you can now interact with horses again. After that, you'll get this other one of wanting to have a friendly interaction with a horse successfully. And if you do so and succeed, you will finally overcome your fear of horses and it'll be removed completely from your trade panel. Before ending this video, I want to share some honorable mentions of other features from this pack. Horses cannot get onto stairs, but they can step onto a platform that's one step high, so if you place a lot of them together, you can technically make a stair for horses. There are two new TV channels from this pack, the Wild West channel and the Pony Up channel, which is like the kids version of the first channel. You can take pictures of your horse using your phone. There is one new swimmable area in Chestnut Ridge and it's located in the Galloping Gulch district near this gorgeous waterfall. You can place various wall decorations on these two ranch signs introduced in the pack. It also applies to both sides of the sign. You can turn on rescue horses from the neighborhood stories menu so unplayed households can automatically adopt horses. Finally, most of you might be wondering if unicorns are in this pack and the answer may disappoint you. Unicorns are sort of included, but not really. You see, when you're making a horse in Create a Horse, if you click on the horse's head, there's this category called horns and they can equip this horn. There's also a full version of it with much shorter horn. Equipping this horn makes horses sparkles and have echoey voice, and that's it. No special powers or anything like that, which is disappointing. So those are 10 features and more from the Sims 4 Horse Ranch expansion pack that you might not know. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you like it and if you do, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more Sims contents like this. See you later!